Hello everybody, my name is Jeff and today I'm going to show you how you can make a custom picture frame using Vectrex Aspire software and your CNC machine. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a rectangle here and I'm going to draw the rectangle and make it just a little bit bigger than the material and we'll make it 19 inches by 19 inches and click apply and close and then we'll center that vector utilizing the center and material icon and now I have a vector that I can utilize to plane this piece of cherry for our picture frame and so we'll hop over here to our toolpath side and we're going to use a simple pocketing toolpath to plane the material down so that we have a, a real nice flat surface for our frame. So selecting the pocket toolpath and selecting the vector that we just drew, I'm going to start at zero and I'm going to plane it down about a 32nd of an inch. The tool we're going to use is the Amana RC2248, which is a really neat little fly cutter resurfacing bit. Make sure that your feeds and speeds are set properly based on your machine manufacturer and click OK and we're going to utilize the raster method of uh, machining doing a climb cut so that we get a little bit better surface and we've got to go 90 degrees to our x-axis because we want this to flow in the direction of the grain profile pass will be last and calculate and so if I preview that tool path I've just planed off a 32nd of an inch of our cherry wood so that I have a really nice flat surface to work from. I'm going to start here by creating a new file. And now I know that I have my 18 by 18 inch piece of material that's approximately 0.682 uh, thick. Again, the zero, Z0 zero in the, on the spoil board. X, Y, lower left, and click OK. And so now I have my nicely machined piece of cherry wood. My thickness is accurate to what I have on my CNC machine. And now we can begin to model the picture frame. And so the first thing that we have to do is we have to make a rectangle that represents our photo. And this will be a picture frame for an 8 by 10 photo. And so utilizing the draw rectangle again, I'm just going to drag out a simple rectangle here and I'm going to utilize the um, sizing options here within the draw rectangle function and I want the square to be 8 by 10 click apply and close and then again utilizing the center in material icon I'm going to put that instance or that rectangle that represents our photo right in the middle of our material and so now I have a vector that represents what our picture, that's our 8 by 10 picture. But we're going to need a, a little rabbit for the picture and the glass to sit in from the back of the picture frame. And so I'm going to highlight my 8 by 10 picture and I'm going to come over here utilizing the offset vectors icon. And I'm going to offset inwards about 3 eighths of an inch create sharp offset corners and offset and close and so now this will be the inner vector of our picture frame this represents our picture that's a little bit bigger and we'll cut a rabbit three-eighths of an inch on the back side of the picture frame probably on the router table uh, because this is not a two-sided machining tutorial and uh, then we'll have a, a nice little rabbit for the picture to sit in so I don't really need this vector anymore excuse me this vector anymore because that's the vector that represents our photo and this is the vector that's uh, the inside of our frame and so all of this material is going to be cut out so let's go ahead now and highlight that example photo if you will and delete it and so I know that I want a three inch picture frame and so I'm gonna select the in inner vector of the frame once again utilizing the offset vectors icon and this time I'm gonna offset outwards 
three inches, creating sharp offset corners, offset, and close. And so now you can see that I have what will become a three inch picture frame with our eight by 10 picture that'll be in the middle. Now in order to model this, we're going to utilize the um, extrude function from within Aspire to extrude our 3D model. And in order to utilize the extrude to create the 3D model, you need a center line vector. And again, just in the for the sake of simplicity, we have three inch thick picture frame. We know that half of that is an inch and a half. And so if I select this vector again, and again utilizing the offset outwards vector icon, 1.5 inches creating offset corners and offset and close, we now have a center vector that we can extrude our 3D model on. And so now that we have our vectors, we're going to hop over to the modeling tab and we're going to select that vector that we have in the middle. And we're going to come up here to our extrude function, our extrude icon, and we're going to use selection. And now it's asking us, hey, what do you want to extrude along that vector? Well, I don't have anything. And that's where we get a little bit tricky and where we now have to decide what we want the profile of this frame to look like. And so let's hop back over to the drawing tab and utilizing the draw curve icon, we are going to come over here and just utilizing this three inch span as kind of a gauge we're going to come up 90 degrees, about a half inch, left click, and then we're going to come over and down. And I'm not, I'm freehand in this. I'm not using any specific measurements or anything, just kind of freehanding what I think I want this to look like. And so we'll come over about to there, and then we'll shoot back up a little bit to there and then we'll come down to right about there and then we'll hit our space bar that stops the drawing of that curved line and then we'll select our arrow highlight the vector that we just drew click it twice and just drag it over to the left a little bit and now if we hop back over to our modeling tab choose our vector that we want to extrude along select our extrude icon, select use selection. Now we have a vector that we can highlight that we can then extrude along that vector. And so we'll come down here and click apply. And if I hop over here to the 3D view, you can see that we now have a 3D modeled picture frame. Isn't that neat? And so we'll click start new component and close. Hop back over to the 2D view and there we have our vectors and our picture frame. Now I thought it would be fun that we also engrave something into the picture frame. And so we'll call this Grandma's Angels. And so we'll hop back over to the drawing tab and utilizing our text tool, draw text, let's first type out grandmas and we'll use a true type Times New Roman font for simplicity. Click apply. And because I had my anchor position at X and Y zero, it put grandmas down here in the bottom. We'll select close. And then we'll drag grandmas right up here into the center. And then utilizing this box here, holding down the shift key clicking the left mouse button. We're just going to bring that and make that just a little bigger. And now we're going to do the same thing for angels, utilizing our text tool. Type out the word angels. Make sure you don't type out angles. And again, we'll use the Times New Roman, anchor at zero, zero, and apply, and close. And then again, we'll click it again, drag it into position, holding shift, left click, and dragging outwards and we'll make that just a little bit bigger there. So we're going to select our inner vector, hold shift, select our outer vector, 
and then come up here and utilize the 3D roughing toolpath icon. We're going to select the Amana 46321 quarter inch two flute upcut bit. Make certain that your feeds and speeds are accurate based on the machine that you're using. Select OK. We're going to model within the selected vectors, the two that we selected. I'm going to come past the vector an eighth of an inch. So I'm going to go an eighth inch past this vector here and an eighth inch in this vector here just to make sure that we've got a nice crisp edge on our roughing pass. Machining allowance, I'm going to leave 0 .06 for my finishing pass. We're going to 3D raster along the Y axis and calculate. And it's just letting me know that that 0 .06 machining allowance is greater than 20% of my tool diameter, which is OK in this particular case. And there I have my roughing tool path. And if I preview that, you can see that we've got a, a roughing pass of our picture frame. And this is that little eighth inch that we went past the frame there. Select close. Hopping back over to the 2D view, with those two vectors still selected, we're going to use the finishing toolpath icon. And we're going to use the Amana's 46282 5.4 degree tapered ball nose. And again, make sure your speeds and feeds are accurate. We're going to raster, 3D finish, and calculate. So now we need to engrave Grandma's Angels. And so we're going to click on Grandma's, hold Shift, click on Angels. And then utilizing the V-Carve engraving tool path, we're going to go about an eighth inch deep. We're going to use Amana's 45705 60 degree half inch V bit. And again, make sure that your speeds and feeds are accurate here. Click OK. And this is very important. We want to make sure that we project the tool path onto the 3D model and calculate. We have to do two cutout passes, one for the inside and one for the outside. This one we're going to cut on the inside of the vector, and this one we're going to cut on the outside of the vector. And so we'll do the inside one first, profile tool path. We want to cut all the way through, which is 0 .682. We're again going to utilize the 46321. We're going to go on the inside of the vector. We're going to add a couple of tabs here, edit the tabs. And we'll put a tab here, a tab here, a tab here, and a tab here, just to hold. When it cuts that out, we don't want that flopping around, so that'll hold it in place. Close. And our tabs are going to be a half inch wide, eighth inch thick. And we'll call it Profile 1 Inside and Calculate. Let's add tabs to this as well. Edit the tabs. And we'll just put, again, two on this side, two on this side, to make sure that our frame doesn't become disengaged from the material. We'll call this Profile 2 Outside and Calculate. And now if I preview that visible tool path, I've got a nice picture frame there, Grandma's Angels, that I can machine out and put a picture in it. This resurfacing bit from Amana Tools just does a fantastic job of leaving just a smooth finish. I got to tell you, if uh, we weren't modeling this next using 3D model, there would be very little sanding, if any, needing to be done. It just left a marvelous finish, no burning, none of that purple color that you get sometimes with cherry, right? And so this is just a great resurfacing bit, whether it be your spoil board or you want to plane a workpiece. Okay, so these next couple of clips are going to be the roughing tool path utilizing the Amana Tools 46321 from Tools Today. And it's a two flute spiral upcut bit. And as you watch the clips, you'll see how this too just leaves just a beautiful finish, cuts it clean, no burning. Just a great two flute upcut bit from Amana Tools. And so, if you're doing some 3D modeling out there and you need to run some roughing or cutout passes, this makes a great, great quarter inch end mill.
And with the planing and roughing done, it's time to do some finishing. This is the Amana Tools number 46282. And it's a 5.4 degree tapered ball nose with a quarter inch shank. It is ZRN coated. And again, I, I just can't say enough about the finish that this leaves. And so, for V-Carving Grandma's Angels, we're going to use the Amana Tool number 45705. It's a 60 degree V-bit that's a half inch wide, again with a quarter inch shank to fit most of the hobby CNC machines. And so if you're looking for a really good 60 degree V-bit, this is it. Does a great job and we'll get Grandma's Angels carved out and then we'll cut the frame out and have a look. And with that all done, it's time to cut it out. So number 46321, two flute spiral upcut bit. We're going to cut out the middle of the frame, cut out the outer frame, and then we'll have a look at the completed frame and all its glory. Ta-da! And there it is in all its glory, the completed Grandma's Angels frame modeled in a spire and machined utilizing Amana tools from tools today.